Vinci's baby. This is Barry. Vinci. Lindsay, what's his name? Barry. Barry. Dusty. Dusty, did you see Barry? Come back. Did you oh. see? Huh? Dusty, oops. You, you keep hitting it. Uh -uh. Don't, 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 don't. Let mama have. Easy, easy. So Lindsay, I just um, hit the record button since it's just about 8.30. Um, so good evening, everybody. Um, this, my name is Tara. Most of you have um, seen me before, heard me hosting. So today we've got Lindsay, one of our, um, one of our leaders who is going to talk all about essential oils and dogs. So we're super excited. Um, Lindsay's going to, you know, introduce herself and, and go through the presentation. Um, so I'm going to just stop talking and let's enjoy this fun class all about essential oils and dogs. So Lindsay, all right, thanks. take it away. All right. You can hear me, right? Okay. I have a bad habit of muting myself. Okay. So hello, everybody. Um, thanks for coming here tonight. And we are going to get started on talking a little bit about um, how we can use essential oils with our dogs. Um, so tonight is part one. After the holidays, I plan on doing at least one or two more classes um, to talk about different topics. And I'll um, mention that a little bit later in the class tonight. All right, so yes, this is me. I'm Lindsay. Um, to give you a little bit of background about myself, um, Professionally, I am a personal trainer. I teach yoga classes. I am a health coach. And um, I also have been working my own doTERRA business for about a year and a half now. And kind of in conjunction with that, I recently, um, this year, um, began uh, the certification for animal aromatherapy specialists. And this certification was actually created and instructed by Dr. Janet Bork. Um, so some of you may have heard of her. She is actually on the veterinary advisory board with doTERRA. And she's also known as the essential oil vet. Um, she has a practice in Austin, Texas. And if I lived closer to there, um, I'm out in Virginia, um, but I, if I lived closer to her practice, I would definitely take my dogs to her. She's awesome. So she created this six week intensive course um, in the effort to um, just educate others who you know, like to use essential oils and also love animals because she gets so many questions and cases of you know, how do I use these oils with my animals? And as much as she would love to, it's just not humanly possible to um, answer every single question of everybody in, in the world, however many people she is able to reach. So she created this six week intensive course, um, just to give you an idea of how awesome it was. Um, she's actually going to be able to, um, she's working on getting it approved by a couple different organizations. So one of those is called RACE. Um, that is a continuing education group. Um, it stands for registration or registry of approved continuing education. Um, so this is a part of the American Association of Veterinary State Boards. So what this means is that veterinarians um, eventually will be able to take this course that I went through um, in order to um, have continuing education to keep their license as a veterinarian. So that's how awesome it was. That's how detailed it was. Um, it was just, I can't say enough about it. It was great. Um, Another approval that she's working on is um, with this association called National Association for Holistic Aromatherapy. This one takes a little bit longer. It takes a little over a year, um, but she is hoping for this approval as well. And then I didn't know this existed until I took her course, um, but there is such a thing as the Veterinary Medical Aromatherapy Association. So um, that's just to say that aromatherapy has been used um, in the veterinary world for a while. I don't know exactly how long. Um, I do know that um, the essential oil vet has been using them with her practice for over seven years. Um, she's been a veterinarian for, 
I think 15 years. Um, so it, it is used. Um, and tonight, um, because this is my first time teaching this part one class, I am going to be referring to my notes here and there. So um, bear with me on that. I am, I am paying attention. Um, let me introduce you to my dogs next. Um, this is Diggy. Um, Diggy passed away on January 1st of 2019. Um, I had to put him down because he had a very aggressive terminal cancer. It was a bleeding cancer. Um, so that's how I lost him. Um, but he was a awesome dog, a great dog. Um, and some of the things he loved, I wanted to share here. He loved football, catching the football and then deflating the football. Um, that was his best thing. Um, he was very great at tug of war. He liked car rides. He loved chicken nuggets. It's the only way he would ever take any kind of medicine. Um, he liked bath time and he loved the snow. And Diggy is part of the reason why I even started wanting to learn more about different ways that I can help not only my animals, but other people's animals. Um, like when I first got Diggy, I had him since he was two months old. That's when I got him. And he had a really bad reaction to a flea collar when he was, I think about one. And all over the back of his neck, he broke out in these horrible, like bleeding bumps um, from the flea collar. And um, that just kind of turned me away from those products. So um, I decided to look for natural alternatives to help, um, you know, prevent fleas and ticks from, you know, being a problem. So that was one thing that I started with with him. Um, and then the other thing happened when he was diagnosed with cancer, um, since there was literally nothing that traditional medicine could do, um, the doctors gave me a Chinese herb that's called Yunnan Bai Yao, and it helps to control bleeding um, because the tumors that he had, basically at times they would hemorrhage. So this herb helped to slow down that bleeding. And so I thought, you know, if the doctors are giving me, you know, something that's alternative medicine, like I really want to learn, you know, more about alternative medicine for dogs and find out what can I do not being a veterinarian? I mean, how far can I go? And then we have, this is my Chihuahua. Her name was Azul. I also call her Azulita, little Azul. Um, I named her Azul because my favorite color is blue. And because she is a Chihuahua, I wanted to give her a Spanish name. And Azul is 10 years old. Um, she likes chicken, broccoli. She loves to burrow in blankets and take naps. Um, I forgot to add this one, but she is also very good at being bossy. Um, she's had all my pit bulls trained well before I ever did and better than I ever did. Um, one of her dislikes, she does not like rain. She will stay in the house all day um, to avoid that. And then the latest addition here is Barry Sampson. Um, Barry is a one and a half year old pit bull mix. He's big though. He's like almost 80 pounds already. Um, and he still has some growing to do. Um, Barry is very friendly. He loves life. Um, he loves the snow. So he had fun running around in that today. He likes Cheez-Its. Um, I don't really make it a habit of giving my dogs um, human food, but he really prefers Cheez-Its. Um, preferably the white cheddar kind. Um, he also likes tug of war, just like Diggy did. And he loves spending time with one of his best friends uh, named Chance. He's a little French bulldog and they like to play together. Um, he does not like the vacuum cleaner, kind of freaks out when I run the vacuum cleaner. But yeah, this is Barry. Um, he might make an appearance. He's behind me on the floor down there. So we'll see. All right, so tonight um, we are going to learn how we can safely and effectively use essential oils with our dogs. Um, I chose to um, just start with aromatic use and learning diffuser safety tonight. Um, the other classes after the holidays, I will get into topical and internal use. 
Um, just, I decided to break it down because it is a lot of information. For a lot of us, this is very new. So I didn't want it to be overwhelming or have us be sitting here until midnight. Um, so we're just gonna break it into parts. There'll be time for you guys to ask questions and I will do my best to answer them. And then there's also, um, for everyone who stays until the end, there's a chance to win a prize. So let's start out here. Um, the big question that um, I've seen everywhere on the internet, you guys have probably seen it too. Are essential oils toxic? Yes and no. So I want to address a Facebook post that you've probably seen floating around. Um, I first saw it a few years ago and then I've seen it recently. Um, I don't know the person who posted this, um, but it tends to pop up a lot when it comes to dogs and using diffusers. Um, this little dog, um, it said that the dog was poisoned by a diffuser and it turns out that they were using tea tree oil, which is one of the oils that um, we would not use with the dog. Um, I don't, it didn't say like what brand this, um, what brand of oil this tea tree was. Um, so that's one thing that we don't know, but um, it is one that we would stay away from. Um, but I, I do just wanna say that it's, it's not diffusing that is harmful to the dog. It is perfectly okay to diffuse oils around your dog. It matters more about the quality of the oil and which oils you're using when you're diffusing the dog. And we're gonna um, get into that here in just a couple minutes. There's another veterinarian named Dr. Karen Becker. Um, she has a lot of videos on YouTube and one of them is about um, essential oils and why she encourages the use of them as opposed to um, using air freshener sprays or upholstery sprays, scented plugins, candles, incense, things like that, that we can buy you know, at the grocery stores and other stores around. So these products, um, as wonderful as they can smell, um, they do produce pollutants that are harmful to both humans and to our pets. And that doesn't mean that if you put a plug-in in the wall, it's immediately going to be a problem. Um, these um, harmful side effects tend to uh, show up later in life if they're going to. And this would be things like heart and lung disease. Um, it can lead to um, irritation of the uh, throat and airways. It can lead to um, hormone imbalances. So issues such as these um, that we don't see immediately. Um, and this is why she encourages the use of quality essential oils because they are not harmful to humans and our pets. Um, another reason that um, this isn't really toxic, but another reason that we want to um, be you know, cognizant of the type of oil that we're using is because some oils that we can purchase from the grocery store or a pharmacy or even Amazon, they have fillers in them. So this would be something like, say you purchased a bottle of lavender oil um, and you buy the oil, you use the oil, but you really don't notice any difference from it. Um, it might smell like lavender, but as far as using it to aid in some kind of an ailment or like a skin irritation as it does, you may not notice a difference. Um, you might even have you know, a bad side effect from it because um, you're not getting just the lavender oil, you're getting a filler in there as well. So it's not as pure, it's not as potent. Um, so all of that is to say why I recommend only using therapeutic grade essential oils. Um, and when I re refer to oils this evening um, and to what I use, um, I am referring to doTERRA essential oils. Um, that is what I was trained with. Um, so that is what I use and that is what I recommend. Um, even if I were not a doTERRA advocate, I would use it. So it, it just, it's what I trust. Um, and it's, I trust it because it goes through so many testing, um, like I think it's over 40 tests that it goes through to make sure that that test or that oil 
is certified pure therapeutic grade. And this means that when you buy lavender oil, that's what you're buying. There was nothing added to it. There was nothing taken away from it. It is that pure lavender oil. And the other thing that I trust about doTERRA is that they source it from somewhere in the world where that oil, you know, it would be like the flower or the tree, wherever it naturally occurs in the world, that's where they source it from. So you're really getting the best chemistry of that oil when you buy that little bottle and bring it home. Now, when we look at using diffusers with our pets, um, you wanna make sure that you're using a water diffuser. Um, and that just means you add water to it. Um, and you want to look for one that has an intermittent setting. And that means that, um, for example, the pedal diffuser, I have this one, it has a 12 hour intermittent setting and that's what I use. So it will run for five minutes and then it'll shut itself off for five minutes and it'll do that back and forth for 12 hours. Um, some of the other diffusers that doTERRA has that do this are the Lumo, the Brevi, and the Pilot. Um, so yeah, look for one of these diffusers with the intermittent setting. And we'll get into why we do that in a minute. Now, when it comes to how much we use, um, this is important. When you, um, you, you have your diffuser, you add your water, when you are gonna use one oil, so let's say you pick lavender, and I'm gonna use that example a lot tonight because that's one of the major go-to oils when it comes to dogs. So let's say we choose lavender oil. You're only gonna use about three to four drops of that oil. That's all that you need. If you're gonna do a diffuser recipe, so let's say you did um, lemon, lavender, and peppermint oil. So as a recipe, you can use, um, let's say you did two drops of each one. So you've got six drops. That's fine for a diffuser recipe. And then if you're gonna um, use the pilot, which is smaller, the pilot diffuser is the portable diffuser. Um, I use it in my car. So with that one, I would recommend no more than three drops. And I say that because it's a smaller diffuser. So it says only three to five drops anyway, but with your dog, if your dog is in the car with you, for example, you know, you're, you're inside your car, it's obviously a smaller space than a large living room. Um, that's why I only use, like I do three drops. If I have, like if I use breathe oil, I put three drops in there and it's fine. So if you wanna take a screenshot of this to kind of know how many drops, just kind of a general guideline of what you would use, you can do that. And then um, where should you put your diffuser? So this is important too um, because dogs are curious. Um, if your dogs are like mine, like Barry Samson, he's a puppy. He like checks out everything. He's very nosy. So it's important to place the diffuser out of reach, out of your pet's reach so that they can't knock it over. Um, Cause that number one, it's a mess for you to clean up and you know, we just, we don't need them to knock it over. Um, I would also recommend that you place it away from your pet's bed or crate or you know, a pillow that they like to lay on. Um, and this is just, by this I mean, you don't wanna put it right next to their crate or right next to their bed. Just have it in the same room diffusing and that's fine. All right, um, some other ways that, um, other safety rules that we can follow. Um, if like, for example, um, in the living, like if I have one of my diffusers in the living room behind me here. So you wanna make sure that the diffusers in a room is where your pet can leave if they want to leave. Um, you know, dogs are very good about just being honest. <laughs> if they don't like something, they're gonna let you know. They're just gonna walk away. Like, you know, this is not for me. Um, so make sure that the dog can leave if they want to. Um, I know it's getting cold now, it's almost, you know, it's winter time, um, but you can also just crack the window in the room so that there is some fresh air getting it circulating through. Um, and that goes for the car also. If you're in a car, um, you could crack the window or if you have a sunroof, maybe pop that open a little bit if you can. If you can't, um, you know, if it's raining outside and you're in the car, obviously you don't wanna roll the windows down. But if you, you know, are following the drops and you have no more than three drops in there, then you're fine. Your pet's gonna be okay. Um, and you don't have anything to worry about. I do it on car rides. Um, 
my brother and sister used to live in New York. So when I would drive up there, I would, you know, put my pilot diffuser in the car, Barry and Asul are in the back seat. I put, um, I like to use Serenity. Um, I also like to use the Breathe Blend and I would put that in the diffuser and they're totally fine driving all the way to New York. So it's okay if you can't crack the window. Um, and then the reason that we follow these guidelines of, you know, cracking the window, making sure they can leave if they want to, following the drop recommendations um, is because we all know that dogs can smell a lot better than we can, but just to put that into numbers, um, humans, we have, you know, right here behind the bridge of your nose, we have 3 million olfactory sensory neurons that help us be able to smell. Dogs have 500 million. So when we put, like if it were just me in the room and I could put 10 drops, that we know we want to use less drops around our dogs because it smells so much stronger to them. Um, and it doesn't mean that the oil is, you know, going to be harmful to them. It's just that we want to be mindful that a few drops goes much longer, uh, goes a lot further for them than it does for us. But even with a few drops in the diffuser, I can still smell it just fine. It makes, you know, if my sister comes over, she walks in and, you know, she'll comment that it smells good in here. So it's still plenty. Um, another guideline that we want to follow is just to be aware of your pet's health. Um, and by that, this is a little bit deeper than I really want to get into tonight, but I will answer questions if you have them. Um, and this also applies a little bit more to topical and internal use um, when you're actually applying the oil to your dog or having them, you know, take it by their mouth. Um, you just want to be aware of their state of health because oils with dogs, just like humans, can be very individualized. So what works for one human or one dog, um, it may not work for the next human or dog. Um, so don't worry too much about that when it comes to aromatic use. I just wanted to briefly touch on that. Um, when you're using your diffuser for the first time around your dog, um, it is always smart to monitor their, monitor their behavior. Um, you want to look for uh, both positive and uh, maybe any negative reactions. I've been using oils, diffusing them in my house for a year and a half with my dogs. I've never had a problem. Um, I, I just follow the drops rule um, and they're fine. Um, I've actually never seen a negative reaction. I see more positive reactions, honestly. Um, for example, in the evening, I like to diffuse Serenity, which is a, a blend of lavender and vanilla, and there's some other oils in there too. But I um, put that in the diffuser in my living room, and then I have one in the bedroom also. And I mean, we all know dogs are awesome sleepers. They can sleep like through anything. But um, with the Serenity going, I swear they look like they are melting into the sofa or the blanket, whatever it is that they're lying on. I mean, they are just like knocked out. It's kind of like if you had a really relaxing massage, like that's how relaxed they look. It's really kind of cute. Um, I posted some pictures of them with their Serenity, their Serenity photo shoot um, on Facebook. So yeah, it, it works. Um, and then if your dog seems like it is not liking the oil, like if some, um, behavior that you that might seem a little bit negative if they are like rubbing their paws over their eyes or if they're rubbing their eyes against the furniture. Um, again, I, I've never seen that happen. I just wanna bring these up so that you are aware of what that could mean. Um, that just means that it might be a little too strong. Maybe it's too many drops um, or they just don't like the oil. In that case, just take them outside, get them some fresh air or open a window in the house and then it'll just kind of circulate the oil out and then your dog will be fine. But like I said, this has never happened to me in a year and a half with, I've had my two dogs here, friends' dogs, my sister's dogs over here. It's never been a problem. All right, so just to give you a visual of our diffusers that we have, um, I actually have all three of these. Um, Maybe that says something about my spending habits. Um, but I have one in each room. I have the pedal diffuser um, in my bedroom. I have the Lumo diffuser in my living room. 
And then the Brevi stone diffuser um, is in the guest bedroom. So um, any or all of these are awesome. I just like to have one in each room so that I don't have to move it around. Um, I did that in the beginning and then very quickly decided I need one for each room. So that's what I did. And then we have, this is our pilot diffuser that you can use in the car or, you know, if you have a room, maybe you like to meditate, you can have it sit next to you during a meditation or an exercise, um, like a yoga class, or you could even diffuse like wild orange, you know, if you're doing a workout in your home, it's very energizing. Um, this one, um, a couple times that it has been available with Oterra, it does sell out quickly. Um, it happens to be available right now. So if you think this is something you would like, um, I would um, look into that. And then we have a few other ways that we can use oils aromatically. So you can use it um, as like an air freshener. You can spray it into the air. I like to use a mist spray bottle so that it's not like, you know, it does what it's like, it's just a mist of, you know, the water with the oils. I think my bottle right now has, um, so you just fill it up with water. And then I did, I think I did about 15 drops each of lavender and frankincense. I like that combination. Um, it's another good one to um, diffuse also. And I spray it in the air as a air, um, freshener. My dogs like to sit on the sofa. So when I'm cleaning my sofa, I'll kind of just mist it over the sofa. Um, even though I have dogs, I don't want my house to smell like I have dogs. Um, so I do use it that way. You could also spray it over their bedding. Um, and this would just be like, you could just be standing and spray it over their bedding. You don't want to saturate it, obviously, um, but you could spray like some lavender um, in that water bottle. You could spray it over their bedding for them. Um, the, lavender is, is, the lavender is calming to your dog and it can help them um, sleep more restfully too. Another diffuser that you could use is a humidifier diffuser. I don't have this one yet. Um, doTERRA does offer one. Um, just make sure if it's a humidifier diffuser that it is safe to use essential oils. Um, and again, you would follow the drop recommendations that we talked about earlier. And I believe the humidifier diffuser, um, I don't think it has an intermittent setting, but it does have like a low, medium, high setting. So if you have this one, um, I would recommend starting with the low or the medium setting. Um, and when I, I do wanna buy one of these as well, um, I'll probably share on Facebook, like how, how uh, which setting that I used. Um, so I'll share that as soon as I get one. Um, this, another way that we can use them aromatically, this is not gonna be probably as common, something that you would do on your own, you can. Um, this is a, uh, it's called direct inhalation. This is something that I would do in what's called self-selection. So self-selection is just a way in which you allow the dog to basically tell you if they like the oil or not. So for example, you would take a bottle of oil. Um, I'm gonna use, if any of you were, um, using doTERRA in the summer, they had a, a buy one, get one, and one of the oils was Island Mint. So I love Island Mint. So I first asked Barry Sampson if he liked it. So because they can smell so much better, remember, you keep the cap on, on that bottle. And you don't hold it right up to their nose. You can literally just stand like maybe a foot away from them and just hold it there. And because they're curious, they're gonna come over there and check it out. So I held up the bottle of Island Mint and Barry walked right up to it and he loved it. Like he was super psyched. He was licking the bottle, you know, just the outside of the bottle again. I didn't let him lick the oil. He was licking the outside of the bottle. Totally loved Island Mint. I was like, you're definitely my dog because <laughs> you like the Island Mint. So um, that's one way that the dog will show you that they like it. Um, I have had, I don't remember which one it was, but I have had him like walk away from a bottle of oil. He just looked at me kind of like, what is wrong with you? And he like turned and left the room. So um, yeah, they're good at being honest. Um, and then lastly here, I wanna say that um, just like with humans, using oils with dogs is very individualized. Um, so like what works for one may not work for another one. 
most of the time it does. Most of the time with animals, it is pretty uniform. Um, but there are some cases where, you know, one dog doesn't like it and the others do. Um, so just like humans, you know, it's always best if one doesn't work to try something else, go back to the drawing board and you're going to find something that they like. And then this is a picture of the Dawn Aroma Humidifier Diffuser. Um, so that, like I said, this is pretty new um, with doTERRA. I think it just came out this year. All right, so now um, you can see here, see these are the hot oils that we would want to be cautious with. Um, there are six. So we have cassia, cinnamon, clove, oregano, rosemary, and thyme. So this doesn't mean that we can't use them. It just means that you want to follow some precautions. When it, so when it comes to diffusing oils, like two that are kind of popular to diffuse are cinnamon and clove. Um, I put a star here next to the cinnamon um, because there are a couple different blends that have the cinnamon in it. Um, for example, the Holiday Joy, I think it's called. It has a red label um, that sold out before I got it this year. Um, but the Holiday Joy has cinnamon. The Harvest Spice has a good amount of cinnamon in it. Um, so with those two oils in particular, definitely only use like two or three drops if you're gonna diffuse that. Um, it's, they smell wonderful, but the cinnamon is just very strong. Um, and that's, I mean, it smells great. It doesn't mean that it's bad. It just means that your dog is gonna smell it 10 times greater. So only use two, three drops maximum with those oils that have cinnamon or just the cinnamon single oil. Um, clove also, um, just gonna grab my bottle of it, but clove also has um, a very strong, powerful scent. So um, any of these, I would stick with like three drops or less. Um, the other ones, cassia, oregano, rosemary, and thyme, those oils, um, those are gonna apply more to the topical and internal use. So you really don't have to worry about those yet. They're not as popular oils that we would diffuse. So tonight, um, let's just focus on the cinnamon and the clove. The other thing I wanna mention about cinnamon, um, and this is part of how it's very individualized, is the On Guard. So the On Guard is safe to use with your dog in a few different ways. I diffuse On Guard. Um, I like to combine it with peppermint in my diffuser. So for example, I think I just did it the other day. So I did three drops of peppermint and I did, I think two or three drops of the On Guard. And the On Guard is okay to use because the cinnamon there, I believe there's just one source. It's not as strong. It's not nearly as strong as cinnamon by itself or the Holiday Joy, the Harvest Spice, and the Clove. Um, so that is why the On Guard is okay. Um, also with the On Guard, um, if you're familiar with the On Guard products, you can use the On Guard detergent to wash your dog's bedding. Um, I use it for all of my laundry, but you can wash their bedding, blankets, pillows, whatever they sleep on. Um, if, you, if your dog wears clothes, Mine don't wear clothes, <laughs> but you could wash it, wash their clothes with those. Um, you can also use the concentrate cleaner. You can use it to clean your floors because like, you know, whatever you clean your floors with, your dogs are walking on that and then they're licking their paws. So you wanna make sure that whatever you're cleaning your floors with is something that is not toxic to them. Um, so I do clean my floors with it. Um, clean almost every surface in my house with it really. And I also use the um, hand wash. So like when Barry goes outside, his feet get like really muddy. I mean, he's he's like, like a human little boy, like he goes straight for the mud. And so before he comes in the house, I just get like a bucket of warm water. I put a couple pumps of the hand soap, on guard hand soap in it. And then I just wash his feet before he comes in the house. Um, so that he doesn't track mud all through the house. That would drive me crazy. 
Um, so you can definitely use the OnGuard products that way um, around your dog, around your house to keep the surfaces you know, safe and clean for them. All right, this is probably what everybody really wanted to know. What can't I use? The good thing is the list is very short. Um, when it comes to just a basic rule of thumb about don't use these oils. So the three that we are gonna stay away from are birch, tea tree, and wintergreen. And um, in regards to doTERRA, this includes the deep blue. And that doesn't mean that the deep blue would necessarily, doesn't mean it would hurt your dog. Um, I just, the veterinarian, she recommends that we don't use it um, because it does contain wintergreen um, and there's a better option. Actually, Aromatouch is what you would use um, to relieve muscle tension or you know, joint pain um, on the dog. You can diffuse Aromatouch um, and you can also use it topically on your dog. And we'll dive into that deeper in another class. Um, hey, Lindsay, what about like deep blue? Like if I use deep blue on myself, like the rub or the oil, and then is that bad? Like what if the dog licks, I mean, I'm just. Yeah, no, that's a good question. Um, I'm glad, I'm really glad you asked that. So I use deep blue a lot. I exercise, I get sore muscles. I like just last night, um, I had like a really bad cramp in my calf. So I put deep blue rub all over my lower leg and um, Barry came over and he like just kind of smelled it and he like just walked away. So in most cases, like the dog knows what it doesn't like to be around and they won't lick it, they won't walk away. Um, I mean, I wouldn't encourage, like if you have deep blue on you, um, like if I use the oil or the rub and I put it on myself, I wash my hands. So that way, you know, if I go to pet berry or, you know, pick anything up that he's gonna use, I mean, I'm, I mean, it would be very small amount because it's already absorbed into your skin, but I just, as a general rule of thumb, after I, I apply oils to myself, I wash my hands and then I don't have to worry about um, the dogs at all. Um, but yeah, I've never had, neither one of them have tried to lick the deep blue rub. They haven't, so, um, but yeah. So don't let your dogs do it um, just as a precaution, um, but it'll soak into your skin before it would really cause any harm to them. Um, the tea tree oil, um, that one, um, the reason I, I can mention a little bit why we don't use that. Um, we don't use it with dogs because it has to do, so with the chemistry of the tea tree oil, it has to do with um, how it's metabolized by the dog's body. And it's metabolized very slowly. Um, it could stay in their system for up to five days. And that is what, that's part of what makes it harmful to the dog. So that's one reason why we don't use that. And the Essential Oil Vet actually has um, on her website, essentialoilvet.com, she has lots more information um, about why we don't wanna use this oil in particular. Um, her website is a fantastic resource. I would highly suggest going there and checking it out. Um, and I'll have that at the end of the class tonight too, so you can screenshot that. But these are the three oils um, that we wanna stay away from. So you can really pretty much use anything else when it comes to doTERRA's oils. Um, these are the top three that we, that we don't use. All right, so these are my top 10 favorite. Um, I have used all of these oils, diffusing them around my dogs, all of them. Um, so you can see here um, how each oil supports the body. And this applies to both humans and our dogs too. So the other reason I wanted to really do this class is because um, I've had people who would love to use essential oils for themselves. You know, that's the first reason why they want to get them, but they, they don't because they're worried about how it's going to affect their dog, um, which I totally understand. And I mean, I was worried about it too in the beginning. And that's why I did so much research and I just found so much um, contradictory information that when I finally found the course that I took, I was so happy to finally have, you know, a veterinarian that I could trust. And then I didn't have to listen to all the other noise out there of, 
do, you know, do this and don't do that. It was just too much for me. Um, so I use all these oils at home in the diffuser, um, the adaptive, aroma touch, um, the balance, breathe. Um, I know some of you are probably thinking, well, what about breathe? Because it has tea tree oil in it um, and it has eucalyptus oil in it, which is also slightly controversial, but not, it's not that bad. Um, but according to the veterinarian, the reason that we can use breathe, and it's actually in her book that I'm gonna show you here in a little bit, is because when those oils are part of a blend, they are not as strong as they would be by themselves. Um, and I love Breathe, it's one of my favorites. Um, I probably go through a bottle every month, I love it. Um, I diffuse it around my dogs. Like I said, I follow the drops. I only do like two or three at a time. I've never had a bad reaction ever. And I use it probably at least every other day. Um, so it is true, it, just because it's in a blend, it's okay to use it. Um, then we have cedarwood, um, we have frankincense, lavender and serenity. So lavender by itself or part of the serenity blend, um, both are awesome. The on guard that we talked about, peppermint and then wild orange. So we didn't really talk about citrus as too much yet, but um, citrus oils are perfectly fine to diffuse around your dogs as well. Um, I like to diffuse the wild orange, lemon, and citrus bliss. Those are my three favorite citrus, yeah, my three favorite citrus oils. Um, and it's always been helpful. Um, one thing I do want to point out, like, for example, with the lavender oil or the serenity. So one issue that oils can help address with a dog are um, their like behavioral issues. Um, I do want to say with a dog, especially if you have a high energy dog, like Barry has like an insane amount of energy. It's ridiculous. He could run and walk all day in order to get tired. So lavender, serenity, adaptive, balance, those oils, they do help to calm your dog, um, but nothing works like exercise. So um, what I do for him, you know, we go for our walk, you know, he gets his exercise, and then when we're in the house, I diffuse it just, I like, I mean, it smells nice, but it's just extra calming for them to help him relax after he's worked out. I mean, he's stuck with the trainer for our mom, so he's gonna have to work out for the rest of his life. All right, so when I was taking the um, aromatherapy course, I thought, man, it would be so cool if doTERRA had a dog kit. So they don't have a specific dog kit, but their Healthy Essentials Kit, you can use all of these oils with your dog with the exception of Deep Blue. Um, so this, out of all the um, starter kits that doTERRA has, this is the closest one to being um, most useful for yourself and for your dog. Um, and it comes with the pedal diffuser. And we talked about, let's see, we have adaptive on guard, Digest Zen, we'll dive into that use with the topical and internal. Same thing with the Copaiba, that can be used as well. Um, and then all of these uh, peppermint, lavender, lemon, you can diffuse all of them. You can diffuse Copaiba and you can diffuse, well, I've never diffused Digest Zen actually, um, but we'll talk later in another class about how to use that on your dog. So, and this month for December, um, Right now, if you place an order of 200 PV points here, which this, um, this kit is, you actually um, receive a free frankincense. Um, so that's awesome. The frankincense by itself, I think is around $75 wholesale. Um, and that's another one that you can diffuse around your dog too. So you'd be getting another one um, that you can use for both you and your dog. Okay. Um, now that I've talked for quite a long time, um, does anybody have any questions? If you, if you have a question, feel free to unmute yourself. Um, and ask away, I'm gonna check the chat room. Um, yeah, Amy, did you have a specific question about On Guard or did I answer it for you already?
Is Amy still here? Okay. I have a question. Hi, yeah, who's that? Hi, Lavonda. Hi. So I know we were gonna go into some um, deeper orals in the future. Mm -hmm. but I have a Siberian Husky slash King Corsa mix. Ooh. Very hyper. Mm -hmm. And so I just tried to let him sniff the lavender and he was like, uh-uh. <laughs> he did not like it. So yeah. I guess is there like, just going through the list, just try all the different oils to see if he would be willing to embrace that oil or I guess what's the approach? You That's, that's a great question. Um, so you can, um, yeah, because like the when I talk about the process of, you know, hold the bottle there, let him sniff it, see if he likes it. Mm -hmm. um, it's it doesn't always work because like sometimes dogs, they just think it's weird. They're like, mm -hmm. you know, what is that? What are you doing? You know, this, I can't play with this. Right. But most of the time, they just think that we're weird. Um, so well, our children, too, right? right. Exactly. <laughs> right. We're part of the family. So um, what I do, like Barry Sampson, he's not really cool with lavender either. Like if I hold the bottle to him, he's just like, eh, you know, I don't really like it. Um, but that doesn't mean that you can't use it. So you could just start diffusing it. Um, and even if your dog is kind of like, you know, not really cool with this, but it could still um, benefit him. It could still have that calming effect on him. So it's kind of like hiding vegetables in your kid's food. Like, you know, they don't know it, but they're getting the benefit. Right. Um, does that kind of, does that help? Yep, that makes sense to me. I have a nine-year-old, so that absolutely makes sense. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Thank you. You're welcome. Lindsay, I have a question. Okay. Uh, is uh, with uh, Dusty the Great Pyrenees, he's eight months old, soon be nine. Um, and I know he's still, uh, you know, in the, in the puppy stage and he is a little hyper. Um, like at night, whenever he's in the bed, could could I put um, like a lavender or the uh, serenity, say just kind of a drop in my hand and rub it together and then rub it in his fur? Or is it um, just mainly in the bed or in his bed that I need to spray it? Um, you can, um, this one is um, an easy process that you can try with him. So when you apply oils to a dog topically, so when you're putting it um, on their fur, on their skin, um, we definitely, we stay away, just like humans, stay away from the eyes, inside the ears, the mouth and the nose. Um, so what you could try with Dusty, you can take lavender, I would just pick one oil. So you could choose lavender or serenity or even balance. Um, put just a drop in your hands and then do like um, maybe like a teaspoon, uh, just, so just more coconut oil. So blend it with coconut oil, rub that in your hands, and then just put it on, like just take your fingers, two fingers, thumb and a finger, and just, just rub a little bit and onto the tips of his ears, the very tip of his ears. Um, you know, just, it's, you don't want it to be really, I mean, it's not gonna be runny, but you don't want it to get it inside the ear. Um, if you don't want to do the ear tips, you could place it um, like on the, you can do like behind his head. So it's close, you know, close to this area. Um, yeah, you, you can try those two things. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. Anybody else? So this is really helpful, actually. Um, the, it just for, perspective of not understanding how some of the things we do um, impact our dog's behaviors. For the longest time, I would put lavender in the bath mm -hmm. and lavender Epsom salt, and the dogs wanted nothing to do with being in there. Okay. Um, and then I started putting balance in with the bath mm -hmm. and they would come and they would lay down next to the tub. And I just tested the, do you like it or do you not like it? Mm -hmm. And they, the one that's with me now wants nothing to do with the lavender, but is licking his lips when, um, after he sniffs the balance. Oh, that's awesome. Yeah. Like they'll, you know, dogs are probably one of the most honest creatures and they will tell you what they like and don't like. That's really cool. That's a, that's a good, 
clients. The oils do similar things for the dogs as they do for us? Oh, yes. Yeah. It's like across the board, it's pretty much the same because it's not about whether um, we're using it with the human or the dog. It's like what the benefit of that oil is. Um, so like, it, it, like the lavender, it's soothing for us and it's also soothing for them. So that's what makes it nice is to really, you know, to, to learn more about how it does affect them um, so that we feel comfortable and safe using it in our home, you know, so that way, you know, we like it, but we also know it's, it's safe for them. It's not hurting them. And in a lot of cases, it's helping them too. So yeah, that's, that's really what I wanted to start to um, clear up for people tonight is that it's, you know, it doesn't have to be, um, we don't have to be afraid that there's a way to do it. All right, well, those are really awesome questions. Um, so if no one else has any more tonight, let me show you. Um, we can stay in touch. So if you wanna screenshot this, this is my email. If you think of questions later, feel free to, feel free to send them to me. Um, or like I'm also on Facebook, starting to be on Instagram, um, kind of a social media amateur, but I'm learning. Um, and then also you could look for the essential oil vet. She's on Facebook as well. This is her website. Um, she has a tremendous amount of resources on her website. She has, um, there's smaller courses that you can take. She's got free information there. Um, she also has a paid Facebook group. I believe it's $14 a month. Um, I'm part of that group. And in her paid group, if you have questions, she um, will answer them there. Um, like, cause my certification, I can't, you know, claim to treat, cure, um, or prescribe anything. I can just help support us with essential oils, um, which is, which is a lot. Um, and then we have Dr. Karen Becker, who was the other veterinarian, um, that you can find on YouTube. She has lots of videos about, um, like her points of view when it comes to animals and their health and nutrition as well. All right, um, Tara, are you ready to do a spin the wheel? Tara? Yes, I am. I'm here. <clears throat> All right, so for everyone who stayed with us till the end, thank you. And I'm giving away one free book tonight. This was written by um, the Essential Oil Vet. And it's a reference book um, for oils with dogs and cats. And I'll get into cats in another class as well. Let's see who awesome. is the winner. All right, so I just put in the names of who attended. Let me, oh, my phone just died. Oh, wait, hold on. <laughs> okay, let me click it. Who's the lucky winner? It landed on Lavanda. Lavanda. All right, hey. congratulations. You are the winner. <laughs> Thank you. You're welcome. Um, I need it. I need help. <laughs> <laughs> You're going to like this. And so for everyone else, if you want to like, I think I found it on Aroma Tools. Um, it's not on Amazon, um, but it has like lots of diffuser recipes. Um, it has some like hot spot sprays, uh, flea and tick shampoo that you can make. Like it's a really awesome reference book. Um, so you're going to love it. Lindsay, what's the name of the book so that we can all look at it for? Um, it's called Essential Oil, is it Essential Oils for Pets. And it has these, this dog and cat on the front. And if you go to um, the essentialoilvet.com, go to her website, she's who wrote the book. Um, you can find it there as well. Thank you. You're welcome. Um, let's see, and Lavanda, Let's see, Tara, do we have do we have her email how we can um I guess Lavanda, if you want to reach out to um maybe send Lindsay an email with your information so we can make sure we get you your prize. Like your home address or I don't know if you're local. Are you in are you in I'm Lorton? Lorton? Okay. We can figure something out. Okay. Okay. Yeah. We'll we'll definitely be in touch. So um I know this is gonna be like a, a routine, like a, not a routine, um, a series of classes that Lindsay's gonna be presenting. Um, so we're excited for the next one, Lindsay, I can't wait. 
and um, probably after the holidays, right, Lens? Yeah, for sure. Yeah, yeah. So thank you all for joining this evening. Um, hope everyone has a great holiday. And if you have any questions, um, anything pet related, reach out to Lindsay. Yes, anytime. All right, thanks everybody. Thank you.